wonder it. So, so close to 500 million? No, 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 no. maybe 300. I don't, who counted them? Who counted them? I know. Yeah, but, you know who, I want to know who counted I don't know who counted them. I tried, but I couldn't. <laughs> yes. and of course, it's a lot. <laughs> it's a lot. See, now I have to go take a nap. <laughs> so, <laughs> your series everyone knows are Goosebumps, Fear Street, Rotten School, Mostly Ghostly, Nightmare Room, and dozens of joke books under the name Jovial Bob Stein, right? Yes, that's my early career. Your be early Before early I got scary. <laughs> But this is not a complete departure. Here's I believe... a joke I sure. wrote. Sure, here we go. I did about 100 joke books for kids. Mm -hmm. 101 school cafeteria jokes, 101 creepy monster jokes, 101 dog jokes. What do you get when you cross a dog with a frog? You get a dog that can lick himself from across the room. <laughs> <laughs> that's, come on, that's one of my best jokes. <laughs> come on, come on. Let's hear it. Woo! <laughs> so I know, I believe you've written a, in the past an adult book or two, but you haven't written an adult 15 book. 15 years ago, I wrote a book for a grown ups called Superstitious. Mm -hmm. And then I've been waiting by the phone for someone to ask me to do another one. Fifteen years. Well, now, no one called. <laughs> but then but you just I, decided to do it yourself. You no, said, what the heck? Here's what happened, mm -hmm. seriously. Um, my readers grew up. <laughs> you know, this is the 20th anniversary of Goosebumps. Wow. It's been 20 years. 1992. And all those kids from the early 90s who read Goosebumps back in the heyday of Goosebumps are now in their 20s and early 30s. They all grew up. And I keep in touch with them on Twitter. I'm on, I hear from them all day on Twitter, my old audience. Because mm -hmm. there are no kids on Twitter. It's all 20-somethings and 30-somethings. And it's wonderful for me to stay in touch with my old audience. They, you know, they'll say, I wouldn't be a librarian today if it wasn't for you, or thank you for getting me through my childhood. And then they all say, why don't you write something for us? Please write something for us. And I thought, well, I can't ignore my old audience, and that's why I wrote Red Rain. Well, and I was looking um, on your website, I'm too old to Twitter, and I saw <laughs> that you often start your book with the title. Is that how you did it with this book? Did the title, Red Rain, kind of come to you? Actually, and you said, not. I, okay. I, it is true. I, you know, kids always say, well, where do you get your ideas? Where do you get your ideas for these books? And I have to say, almost all of them start with a title. I think of the title first. I think maybe I work backwards from most other authors. Most authors get an idea, and they start working on it, and later they think of a title. But I can't start on a book unless I have the title. And sometimes, you know, we just I was walking my dog in the park, and it flashed in my head, Little Shop of Hamsters. <laughs> I thought, great title, right? <laughs> so I'm walking and think, well, how, how do I make hamsters scary? That's hard. <laughs> well, what if there are hundreds of hamsters? Maybe that'll be scary. What if there's this weird pet shop and all they sell is hamsters, but something else is going on? And that's how I start thinking of it. Mm -hmm. I start with the title. Red Rain wasn't like that. Red Rain started with a different idea, and I thought of the title later. But Red Rain started because I thought, I'm going to write about evil kids. I thought people would find that funny, that because I write so many books with good kids, that if I did really evil kids, I thought people would find that ironic. So that's where, that's where it started. And then I thought I started thinking about twins, mm -hmm. and I realized people are scared of twins. <laughs> people people have weird ideas, even to the, all through history. But even today, people have weird ideas about twins. They think they can communicate without talking. Some people think that if you poke one twin in the arm with a pin, the other one will feel it. People have weird ideas, and they have all along. At, at one point, people thought that twins were actually part animal, that they started out as animals and then turned into humans. 
People thought twins were bad luck. They used to separate them at birth. Um, then I did all this research. I found people thought that twins controlled the weather. <laughs> Any twins out there who did this to us today? I know, yeah, I know. <laughs> and actually, well, I was talking to a woman a couple weeks ago. Uh, she was interviewing me for Slate Magazine. And she said, you know, I'm scared of twins, and I'm a twin. <laughs> that was pretty strange. And so then I thought, okay, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to write evil twins and very naive adults. Because I, I always loved horror movies. And uh, I just grew up watching horror movies. And I remembered all these movies um, about evil kids. I had these vague, so I went out and I watched them again. There were three movies that I watched that had sort of the same thing. It was, they were um, Village of the Damned, Island of the Damned, and Children of the Damned. They were all damned. <laughs> and in every single one, there were these really evil kids, sometimes who had supernatural powers, and the adults were all clueless. And I thought that would, be a, that would be a really good idea for this. And that's kind of how the book got started. Well, I love the title, Red Rain. And you talk a little bit in the book about the phenomenon of, of Red Rain, and then again on some of your websites. Could you tell us a little bit? I mean, there is Here's, such a thing as Red Rain. There really, it really did mm -hmm. happen. There was a, a blood rain. It's usually called blood rain. But, um, in a village in India, and the raindrops came down, and they were red. They were blood red. And the villagers were terrified. What's going on? And a lot of scientists went out to try to study it, and, and no one ever figured out whether it was like minerals in the water or the clouds, something. No one ever figured out the mystery of why this red rain came down. It's such an incredible image in here that there was a reference to a blood rain in the Iliad. And I found this reference and I thought, wow, this is something that people have thought about um, a long time. I think it's so, one of the plagues of Egypt, too, is red uh, rain, blood rain. Is it? Mm -hmm. I don't remember. I don't know. But, you know, so we have this opening scene where Leah, this young travel blogger, this young woman, is on this island, an Outer Banks island off the coast of South Carolina. And she is praying this, this hur horrible hurricane comes and it devastates the island, devastates, and kills people and ruins every structure on the island. And she staggers out the next morning and she's dazed, totally dazed, and passed on, they're piling up the corpses. It's horrible, horrible. And she wanders to the beach, and it suddenly starts to rain. And she looks up, and the raindrops coming down are red. It's like a blood red rain. And she thinks, this is the blood of all the victims coming down on us this morning. And then, out of these curtains of red rain, step these two beautiful blonde twin boys, 12-year-olds. And they just appear. And that's how the book starts. And she is just captured by them from the moment she sees them, feels this incredible connection with them. They've lost their parents, their family, all their connections in this horrible hurricane. Uh, and she de decides to uh, take them home. One of the things I really enjoyed about the book, you've got the true horror, but I also think that you picked out kind of the horror we bring upon ourselves when we do kind of thoughtless or careless, um, even selfish things that bring some of the greatest horror into our lives. And it's not just Leah, but her husband does a, a dumb thing. There's a police officer in there who's involved in a just <laughs> hopeless are, romance. They're all pretty dumb. They're, they're, they? they're pretty just, dumb. I'm just realizing this. Wait a minute. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, so you, yeah, you, you've got the real horror, but sometimes underneath it, it is the, the very familiar horror that we, we do to our, ourselves. Well, the idea is that the reader is saying, what's wrong with them? They're so naive. Why don't they realize? Because the reader knows right from the beginning how evil these twins are. But 
none of the adults have any clue as to what's going on. And the, so the reason